All right, guys, welcome to my second training video. Today, we're going to be doing delts and triceps. Now, for the past year, I've been splitting my delts and my chest training. So for about one or two years, I was doing push sessions. And I've just found that in the past year, splitting the delts and splitting the chest workouts has allowed my delts to come up tremendously. I found that when I first switched over to doing delts on their own, just hitting them from so many different angles and doing, you know, you'll see today I do like five delt exercises in the one session, which just isn't possible in your like conventional push day. So I just find doing delts on their own separately, hitting them from you know two presses and then several isolation exercises afterwards has allowed them to come up tremendously. So I've put a lot of size on them from doing that. Um, and it's find it's something I'll stick with indefinitely rather than doing the push day. So I'm looking forward to showing you how I break that down today, showing you the combination of progress, you know, my lifts overhead, my compound work, and then just getting a lot of blood in the delt itself from all angles from the isolation work. So we'll run through that today. I'll break it down during the session and hopefully you can take something away from that and apply it to your own training. Okay, my first exercise on shoulders is high incline dumbbell press. My warm up on this is quite extensive. I'll start off with a few sets with the 10 kilos, just 20 reps. I'm not really trying to burn myself out and pre-fatigue, but I'm just pyramiding the weight up gradually because I find sets like this, it's not necessarily about getting warm. It's also about kind of establishing that movement pattern and getting everything stable. I try and do, instead of just jumping in, let's say my work set today is around 40 kilos. I won't just do 20, 30, 40 and go straight into it because I'll still be a bit shaky. I try and do the tens and then I'll jump up considerably and then I'll do about six or seven weights pyramiding up to that first work set. And by that point, I'm not only very warm, but I'm also stable. I'm not shaky and I'm kind of like sending that neurological pathway between the brain and the muscles, just getting ready for that movement, getting the body primed to balance and be effective on the first work set. You don't want to go into that first work set being shaky and, you know, not ready for it. It's not just about, like you say, it's not just about being warm. It's about getting ready to perform that movement pattern. So even there, that's 10 kilos, very easy weight, but a little bit shaky. And as I do, you know, another set with that, then I'll jump to the 17s, the 22s and so on it'll start to feel a little bit more stable. So I don't want to step out and doing that, even though it's a very light weight, that gets me ready for the movement as I start pyramiding up. If I was to jump straight to the 17s or the 25s for a set of 10 without doing any of this, I'd, it'd be a little bit unsafe. Not that it's an extremely heavy weight, but I just wouldn't be getting my line right. This allows me to get set and really practice that movement before I start adding in a decent weight. So I'll do a couple of sets of this and then We'll do like a set of 10, a set of eight, a set of six, three, two, and then probably go. So as I said, with this, I'm just getting my range of motion set. You know, the pace of the reps that I want to complete, and I'll try and keep that consistent all the way up to the first work set. So I've still got 20 kilos to go until the first work set, but the aim is to make sure that every single time the dumbbell comes down to my jaw, I lock out directly overhead, a couple inches apart, and that doesn't change from the lightweight all the way through to the heaviest weight. So if I was to skip a lot of these weights out, I think I would be a little bit more shaky and rushed, whereas this allows me to get comfortable before I get up to that weight because I've practiced it several times on the warm-ups. here because I don't want to have to walk with them before the set. <laughs> Much easier. I try and take about two minutes between the last warm-up and the first work set just to conserve energy, make sure there's no inflammation or fatigue in the shoulders. I just did three reps there, but you're still exerting yourself. It's not far off my work set weight. So if I went in within a minute, I'd be going in slightly fatigued. So I just try and give myself two minutes, get a bit of fluid in, get ready for it mentally, and then I'll just go for that first work set. And then between sets, I typically take about two to three minutes as well. And then I'll move on to my next exercise. Come on. Come on. Oof. 
Good, I think it was 10. I think it was 10. I'll have to watch it back. But nine last week, so I'm pretty sure it was. Yep. broke my toe. Fucking hell. <laughs> right, that was 10 reps and 8 reps on them, so up a good bit from last time. Okay, I'll just do a very brief warm-up on here. Um, about three, three or four sets. I'll just do like five reps, four reps, three reps, two reps, and then I'll just go for it. Just to get used to that plane of movement, the direction my elbows need to point when I'm doing it. It's a little bit different to the dumbbell and just playing about with the grip as well. Obviously the bench has to move about to sit in line with the Smith. So sometimes my hands will be a little bit too off to the side. So I just have to get everything set before I go for that first heavy set. So see every single rep here down to the chin and back up. I try to keep the range of motion consistent. If the bar goes below your chin, I don't really find there is any benefit for the delts, it's going on to the pecs at that point, and it's quite a bit of stress on the joint itself going down to that point for no real benefit in terms of like muscle tension. So I just like to keep it to the chin. That's already, the elbows are quite low at that point. I don't really see the need to go any further. Um, and I always get a full lockout because I try and work my triceps on my shoulder presses as well. I don't have to do an awful lot of tricep work at the end of my session because I'm spending a lot of time on the dumbbells and the Smith contract my triceps anyway. So I'll do like a full lockout. I'm trying to get as many muscle groups covered in the one exercise as I can. And if you can get a little bit more tricep work on your delt compound presses, then why not? They're already here with this angle. It's not bolt upright. I'm not at the, the shoulder setting. I'm actually at 55 degrees. So with this, I'm already tying in some upper pec anyway, even going down to the chin. So I am able to train my front delts, my triceps and my pecs all in the one movement, despite it being a delt focused exercise. This is my last warm up now. So I'll just do the work set today is 37.5 kilos each side. So my last warm up is one rep at 32.5 kilos each side. I tried to do my last warm up set on a barbell or a Smith machine 10 kilos less than my first work set. So I find that let's say my last warm up set is 15 to 20 kilos lighter than my first work set. When I go for that first work set and it's 20 kilos more than my last warm up. I'm gonna be overwhelmed by the weight. It's gonna feel like a shock to the system using a weight that's so much heavier. I find that doing one rep with 10 kilos of a weight off the first work set, I'm kind of comfortable because I've already felt a heavy weight in my hands. You know, that's like 90% as heavy as what I'm working with now. So this is only 10 kilos off the first work set. I'll do one rep and then I go for the first work set, aiming for 12 reps on the work set. 10 kilos up. Yeah. First time I ever feel the rep on this for YouTube. All right, guys, just finished up on high incline Smith press. Uh, both sets were heavier than last week by, I think it was two and a half kilos each exercise, and they're only down one rep. So you're not going to get the same reps for heavier weight every single week. That has happened for a few months now. I've been just adding 2.5 kilos to this and getting the top of the rep range again and again and again. So this week it's not happened, um, but I'm sure the next session that I come back to this that will happen. It's just that. Not everything's gonna go up every single week in the fashion you wanted to. There are gonna be where it drops to the bottom of the rep range and you just have to build it up. And then once you hit the top of the rep range, you add a little bit more weight. So it's sometimes the lift progression takes a little bit longer than you'd like it to, but that's just inevitable after a, a long period of trying to progress the same exercise. So I progressed both my dumbbell presses today. This is still heavier than the last session and I've got plenty more to do in the workout. A lot more blood to get into the delts from the side raises that are coming up. So we'll move on to that now and I'll talk you through kind of the way I execute them and how it differs from the heavy pressing. The focus now for the rest of the session is contractions and creating as much tension rather than just lifting a heavy weight. I'm trying to really finish off the delts now and get as much blood in as I can. Face pulls now, I normally alternate between face pull and reverse pet deck just 
not necessarily to try and make them progress because they're not a movement that you can progress like a compound. For a period there, I was doing the pet deck, reverse pet deck every single week. And every now and then it just didn't feel as good. I think it should just be doing the same range of movement every single week without something breaking up. So I alternate now between the reverse pet deck and this. Same sort of scheme, I'll do like a two sets of 10 to 15. The second set, I'll do like a rest pause set just to create two failure points in the last set. And they hit the rear delts just as well. And it's really just about stretching and squeezing and getting it as much blood in. So long as it's feeling good, I don't really care which exercise it is. I just do find that alternating between the two allows me to connect really well with both of them. I'll do this for a few reps, that might be the work set weight. I'm just aiming for like 15. Could be too light, so I'll just do like, I'll know after about three or four reps if it's worth doing for the work set. As I said, it's not something I've done often. Like I said, I've been predominantly doing the reverse pet deck, so I'm still finding my feet on this with what weight to use for a specific rep range. perfect notice with that i'm not throwing my body into it i'm not throwing the weight i'm just trying to drive my elbows back keeping my body fixed even you'll see on that last rep i'm grinding it out i'm not getting to that sticking point and then throwing it in to get that last contraction the whole set from the first rep to the last should look identical you know you're trying to go at that same pace on the way in and on the way out peak contraction holding that for a split second really contracting the rear delt even a split second in the stretch like I said on the last video about the leg extension, I don't want my form to change as a tire, and I definitely don't want it to change as I try to get a little bit stronger on this. I want to make sure I'm always pausing in the stretch and the squeeze, and I'm keeping my body fixed. Side raises now, two sets of 12 to 15. As you see, not a lot of weight on this. I find that on exercises like this, I just find that once you start to try and progress, the weight's too quickly. It just becomes inertia, you know, using your body weight, your traps are gonna get involved, you're gonna move your torso, and then really at that point, how much tension is at the top of the rep when you've had to throw it up there? So I found that, particularly on the dumbbell side raise, and it's happened on this as well, I've had to scale the weight back considerably, that on the dumbbell side raise, for instance, I'll have to do like a progression from say 7.5 kilos, 10 kilos, 12 kilos, 15 kilos, and by the time I get to the 15s, I'm having to do this i'm not able to hold the dumbbells out there so now i'll try and stick to like single figures i'll maybe progress up to about five six seven kilos and that'll be about it and really the idea is to isolate this one mid delt the medial head so you'll see here it's not a heavy weight at all it's like 11 kilos maximum but the feeling inside the delts is brilliant compared to a weight that's double that that i've done in the past where i don't connect my traps do all the work so here i am really just focusing on the connection and getting as much blood in this muscle as i can before i move on to the next body part <laughs> say not heavy weight but the feeling inside the delts there was brilliant especially on the last few reps so it's important that i couldn't achieve that feeling that amount of blood that connection with a weight you know 18 kilos or a couple of plates down wouldn't be possible so i just stay around there take an extra few reps some weeks it's going to drop back 
which is fine as long as I'm getting that connection. That's what I'm aiming for, more so than progressing weight and reps every week. Whereas I feel like if I was going a bit too heavy um, and having to pull the initial few reps up, I wouldn't be able to grind that, that kind of rep out on the last rep of the set. I would get to like the halfway point and fail. Whereas because the weight's not too heavy for me at any point in the range of motion, I can take it to that peak contraction even on the final rep. Whereas if I was a little bit further down the stack, I'd maybe like a 10 rep set. The first five would be great all the way up and then it'd start to tail off. Whereas with that sort of weight, where I'm essentially using a lighter weight and making it feel heavy, I can dictate how heavy it feels kind of early on in the set, I'm making myself fail. And then the last rep, I'm still getting that kind of grind up to the last bit of the contraction without the muscle failing because I'm controlling that weight. I'm not doing a weight that limits me to 12 reps. I'm making myself fail at 12 reps. I make it feel so heavy that I can't get more than that particular number that I'm aiming for. Okay, so here with the side raise, I'm doing like four kilos. I'm aiming for like 10 to 15 reps. As I said earlier, I've done like 12, 15 kilos for them sort of reps before but I just find that past a certain point, even if I'm progressing nicely on the way up, eventually once you're at them sort of weight, something just seems to go in terms of the strength. Let's say I'm doing like a 20 to 30 rep set, I'll do like two and a half kilos. If I'm doing like a 10 to 15 rep set, I'll do like four or five kilos. And then I'll finish off here with like a 30 rep set. I'll even try and get like more than 30 if I can. And I'll just do like the 1.25. So, I mean, them weights, you fit the pathetic, but when you're going slowly, you're holding the contraction, you're pausing at the bottom and the top, you're killing off any momentum, and you're keeping yourself locked into a seat. You are just using nothing but the medial delt. I mean, a lot of people are trying to get stronger on every exercise in the gym. And although I think that's important on stuff like presses, on your isolation work, like push down, side raises and stuff like that, I don't think it's realistic to get stronger and stronger indefinitely. So for me, I just stick with a select weight and I just try and get the form better and get a better connection, a better pump. When I'm doing the isolation work, I try and progress the Compounds like the dumbbell press and the Swift Machine press like you've seen. Okay, so you see there that I've just done a set. That's only three kilos and I managed 12 reps. There was absolutely no way I was getting a 13th. But you can see it like the top of them reps, I'm able to hold the weight at the side of me where the tension is its highest. And I just find that with a weight, anything over like five, six, seven kilos, I'm not able to hold that weight out there for a couple seconds. I'm not able to, you know, resist any kind of tension and any sort of load at the point where the rep is actually at its heaviest. And I think that it's important to be able to hold it in the shortened position, the fully contracted position to be able to bear a weight there. Not only that, I feel that as you've seen at the start of the session, I've progressed my dumbbell presses, I've progressed my Smith presses. That's the exercises that I'm trying to get stronger at. That's, you know, what people name like progressive overloads. You're trying to get stronger by more reps, more weight, or slower tempo and stuff like that. Mainly with them exercises, the compound exercises, you try to get stronger through lifting more weight for more reps. If you can do both, that's great. I think the problem is that people try and apply that to isolation exercises, like the side raise, for instance. And you'll see people who don't have necessarily have big shoulders side raising 15 kilos, 20 kilos. And that's just going to be a lot of inertia. The traps are going to be working. Your torso is going to be swinging backwards and forwards. You're not going to be able to hold that peak contraction. You're not going to be able to initiate the lift with the delts themselves. You're going to be using something else. Whereas that, I can guarantee, was all mid-delt. I felt nothing but that little muscle in there. And you've got to appreciate that there's more mechanisms than just, you know, mechanical tension through loading, adding more weight, more reps, you know, more weight to the bar or more reps to the set with a given weight. There's actually getting more metabolites in the muscle, more blood in the muscle, more lactic acid in the muscle. That is another stressor, which is going to encourage new tissue to grow. So our training shouldn't just be about more reps, more weight, no matter the exercise. Specific exercises need different approaches. So your arm training, for example, or your pet fly, your side raises, your isolation exercises where you're just focusing on one joint moving, isolating one little muscle. 
you should be focusing on getting as much blood and lactic acid in that muscle and creating as much tension and as much stress and localized pain as you can, trying to make a light weight like that feel heavy. Okay, last set for delts today. You just see me do a 12 rep set with the side raises. Now I'll drop to the 1.25 kilo plates and this is 30 reps or more. Some weeks I'll get 25 and then I'll have to take a few breaths and get five reps. Some weeks I'll get 30, some weeks I'll get 31. It'll differ depending on just how it happens in the moment. I'm trying to get as much blood and lactic acid in the muscle to finish off the shoulders and then we'll move on to triceps. I really like this setup. We're having my feet here. I can brace into the bench. That's a much stronger position I find than sitting like this. I brace my back into the bench and I have my feet here so I can press. Okay, that's shoulders done. We're on to triceps now. Today I have two sets of EZ skulls, and then we'll go finish off on the push down. Two sets of bar, one set of rope. I try and do my heavy compound here, eight to 10 reps. And then the push downs are just higher reps. Try to get as much blood in the triceps as I can in three sets. <laughs> I'm gonna go for 10 reps. I got uh, nine reps for this last time. The first set there, I got seven, so I really wanna hit the top of the rep range on the second set, as the, the goal with these is eight to 10. And on that first set there, I just fell below the rep range. So try and kind of rectify that this next set and make sure I get 10. Oh. the isolation work now, kind of cable work. I started off with EZ skulls, sort of an isolation exercise for the triceps. It just feels like more of a compound because you're half pressing the weight, whereas these you're just kind of extending strictly with that elbow joint. There's no front delt assistance at all. Um, but these are like my finishers. On that move, I'm kind of focusing on the EZ skull crusher. I'm focusing on progressing the weight every single week, adding a little bit of weight to the bar, getting an extra rep, things like that. Whereas on these, it's more so about, like I was saying with the side raises, it's just shuttling as much blood into the triceps as I can. I'm trying to get like 20 reps here, and then the second reps, second set, I'm gonna try and get like 15 reps. So totaling 35 reps in just two sets, and then I'll go into the next exercise, which is more so about hitting every muscle fiber that the other exercises haven't. And I'll walk through that as we go into the next movement. But for now, gonna do try and get 20 reps and 15 reps so that we can total a lot of reps in just two sets. Same as last week, 19 reps. I'm gonna drop that a bit and try and get closer to 20 again on the first set because I don't wanna get like 19 and 14. That's what I got last week. And I'd rather get two sets at the upper end of the rep range. So I work in like 15 to 20. I wanna get close to, you know, 17, 18 on this next set. So I'll drop it a plate. <laughs> Seventeen. 
So we've got like 36 reps just in two sets. Okay, this is the last set of the session. I've switched the handle. You know, I've done the EZ skull crusher. I've done the push down. You've hit the long head of the tricep really well with them two exercises. Now I'm trying to make sure I target in here. I'm just switching the grip a little bit. Not really to progress an awful lot. This is like a finisher, getting a good bit of blood in the muscle. Working in the 12 to 15 rep range, if we get more, that'd be great. I just find that this allows me to hit any muscle fibers that haven't really been touched or trained an awful lot in the other two exercises. Just my hands are like this and I'm not necessarily coming out and contracting that you know, medial head. I much prefer this with the molded grip, so I can really get my hands properly in there, as opposed to a rope. I just find, again, that allows me to hit the spot even better. And as I say, it's just an exercise that allows me to contract an area of the muscle I haven't really touched with the other two exercises. Just like the side raises and the face pulls allow me to hit another angle of the delts, this allows me to hit another angle of the triceps. So this will be the last set of the session, and then we're done. <laughs> Steps done. That's us, guys. Hope you enjoyed the session. I'll try and get a back session in for you next time, but hope you enjoyed shoulders and triceps. See the different angles and the different kind of methods that I try and use to target the triceps and the shoulders rather than just going heavy the whole session, trying to get a lot of blood in the muscle as well. Hitting from different angles and just different mechanisms that we can stimulate muscle growth. Because it's not, like I say, it's not all about just getting more weight and more reps. Exercises like this and the side raises and the approach that I take allows you to get you know, stimulate new muscle growth without necessarily just stressing out your joints and going heavy, 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 heavy all the time. You know, getting a lot of blood in, creating as much pain as you can, it's really beneficial. So I hope you can take something away from this session and apply it to your own workouts. If there's a certain muscle group or an area that's not responding, maybe incorporate a little bit of these techniques into your training, lighten the weight, focus on getting that technique and really recruiting the correct muscle that you're trying to target so that you can see that muscle develop. Rather than just getting stronger or lifting more weight, you actually see it the tissue develop because you're using that specific area just like I've done today. So thanks guys, remember to like and subscribe and I'll be bringing way more content your way. Cheers.